So this is a differential equation. It's autonomous because I've only got n's over here, no t's in terms of that differential equation. We could solve this explicitly, but we're not going to talk about that until 7.4. But right now, two of the things that we might be interested in are to find the equilibria and to classify their stability. Finding the equilibria really means we're looking for the places where our value of n is not changing, meaning dn dt is equal to zero. So when you hear that phrase, find equilibria, think set the derivative equal to zero. Well, I'm looking at n, or sorry, <laughs> zero is equal to n times n plus one times n minus three, which means that we have three equilibria here n equals 0, n equals negative 1, and n equals 3. Depending on what this differential equation is modeling, it might make sense to include negative numbers or it might not. So anytime we're talking about a population, we're generally going to ignore the negative number. In this case, let's just explore the whole thing. So we've found our equilibria. Moving on to classify stability, we've got two options for classifying stability. One is to draw the phase plane and to do this graphically, and the other is to use our local stability criterion. So let's start with the phase plane. To get my phase plane going, I need to sketch this graph but we're not sketching n versus t or even dn dt versus t because our derivative is a function of the value of n. So my vertical axis here is going to be the dn dt axis and my horizontal axis will be the n axis. We talked about this a little bit on Friday. Um, thinking about, before I even put a graph on here, since this is my dn dt axis, everything that's above this axis represents where my dn dt is greater than zero. Well, if my derivative is greater than zero, that means my function is increasing. So everywhere above the axis, we're gonna be thinking about increasing n. At the same time, if dn dt is negative, meaning below this axis, then everywhere down here we're talking about a decreasing n value. Next step, I'm going to go ahead and plot those equilibrium points. So let's call that negative 1 and call that 0 and call that 3. And then I need to sketch this graph. So this is a cubic, and I know that I've got three intercepts. So it's either going to kind of wiggle through like that, or it's going to wiggle through like that. If I choose a test point of something larger than three, we'll know whether on the edge we should be up here or down here. So if I put in 10, 10 times 11 times 7, definitely a positive number. So I know that it should be up here. And I can come in and sketch my curve. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. We just kind of need a general shape. Now, with our phase diagram, I'm going to take advantage of what we already said. So everywhere that my curve is above the axis, I should be moving towards increasing n values. So in here, that portion of my curve is above the axis, so I should be moving towards bigger n values. Out here, again, because my curve is above the axis, I should be moving towards bigger n values. 
everywhere that this red curve is below the axis, I know I should be moving towards decreasing or smaller end values. So out here, I'd be moving towards smaller end values. And also in this section, I'd be moving towards smaller end values. Looking at the graph, anywhere that I'm getting pushed towards is considered a stable equilibrium, and anywhere I'm getting pushed away from is unstable. So looking at our plot now, both negative one and three have all of the arrows moving away from them. So negative one and three are both unstable. Unstable. And the equilibrium of zero looks like it's stable. Because all of those arrows are moving towards it. Moving to our second option for classifying stability, that local stability criterion. It's actually very closely related to what we just did. So if I look at my two unstable equilibria, as they pass through this axis, you'll notice that the slope of this curve is positive. And the slope of this curve being positive at that, at that equilibria is going to mean that on the right hand side my arrows move to the right and on the left hand side they move to the left. So that positive slope moving through that point and that positive slope moving through that point lead to an unstable equilibrium. At this point right here, as we pass through that equilibrium, the slope is negative, which is going to leave it, which is going to lead us to a locally stable equilibrium. Well, the way that we would do that without getting the graph is to come back up to our equation dn dt equals n times n plus 1 times n minus 3. If I think about this as my function of n, then this slope down here of this curve, we're looking at how our function, f of n, changes with respect to n, which means we're finding df dn, and then we're going to plug in each of our equilibria to test whether we end up with a positive slope or a negative slope. Notation-wise, one little thing here, usually in our textbook, if we're talking about an equilibrium, we denote that by putting either a star or a hat on top. So our local stability criterion looks like when we take the derivative of the function with respect to n and evaluate it at n star or n hat, if this is less than zero, we've got a stable equilibrium, and if it's greater than zero, it's unstable. Oops, how about DFDN? I'm going to have to take the derivative of this, which means that I need a little bit of space. So, I'm going to erase our phase diagram so that we can do this the other way. If I'm going to take the derivative of that, we could use a triple product rule. I'm going to save myself a little bit of work and do some algebra up front. And if I distribute that n in, then at least I only have a single one product rule to deal with. So I'd have n squared plus n times n minus 3. You could go ahead and multiply that all the way out before you took the derivative. I'll just go with the product rule. So my f prime here, derivative of the first piece, I'm looking at 2n plus 1 times the second, n minus 3, plus derivative of, sorry, Leave this part alone. n squared plus n times derivative of the second piece, which is a 1. Now, I erased them, but our three equilibria that we would test this at are 0, negative 1, 
and 3. So let's see what we get. So if I check negative 1, remember we don't actually care about the over, we don't care about necessarily the value. We just care about whether it's positive or negative. So when I plug in that negative 1, 2 times negative 1, that's negative 2 plus 1, so that's still a negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3, negative 4. Negative 1 squared is 1 plus negative 1, I guess that's going to 0. So I get positive 4, which would make this greater than 0 and unstable, which matches what we got before. Now let's check f prime of 0. 2 times 0, that's 0, plus 1. 0 minus 3, that's negative 3. And over here when I plug in 0, that's going to go 0 squared plus 0 is more 0, which means overall this is negative and stable, which also matches what we got before. And our last point here, f prime of 3. So when I plug in 3, 3 minus 3 is going to be 0, so that whole first piece will be 0. 3 squared is 9 plus another 3, that's 12 greater than zero and unstable, which once again matches what we got.